Welcome to the Art of Action Figures. On this episode, I'm counting down two different top 10 lists for my most wanted Dragon Ball SH Figure Arts figures. It'll be a top 10 bucket list and a top 10 wish list. Top 10 bucket list is an idea that I picked up from an episode of the Star Wars Black Series Cantina podcast, which I really enjoy listening to. The prompt is, what are your top 10 most wanted figures for the line? But with the twist of assume that these will be the last 10 figures ever made in the line. And I think that little twist gives an extra incentive to maybe fill in some of those essential gaps, get the figures out that everybody kind of knows are coming at some point, and it frees up some space on the wish list to maybe something a little more personal, maybe something you're more attached to in the series, um, something that's not necessarily on figure arts radar that you would like to put out there. And I think the mix of those two lists together uh, kind of creates an interesting conversation. So uh, if you want to be part of it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what your bucket list and wish list are for Dragon Ball figure arts. It can be top 10, top 5, top 3, top 50, whatever comes to mind. I'm just curious to read all of your comments and see uh, what other collectors think is Kind of a most essential for figure arts and b maybe what you're most personally attached to about dragon ball and what you think would make cool figures in figure arts without further ado let's summon shenron and kick things off with bucket list number 10. List number 10 is Chi Chi from Dragon Ball Z. My preferred look would probably be the purple and gold dress with uh, the orange scarf and no sleeves. The other nice thing, if they do the sleeveless dress orange scarf look, that is what she's wearing in the Garlic Jr. saga, where uh, it's one of the few times in Z where uh, we get to see. Chi Chi in action a little bit. I mean, she uses the Kaoken attack against Marin and uh, then gets possessed by the Blackwater Mist and becomes a, like a vampire, I guess, and tries to attack Gohan. It would be really cool if they included the uh, sort of vampire face with the fangs and red eyes, um, so that way you could recreate that scene. As far as other accessories, I think she definitely needs some crossed arms, or at least the ability to cross her arms just with the articulation. Um, a cross-looking face as well, for sure. Probably a shouting face. Maybe make it a little comedic and goofy so it can kind of go uh, <laughs> here. Some sort of happy or smiling or laughing face. If they really wanted to go above and beyond, they could give her alternate arms with sleeves and then some alternate legs with pants and make the scarf cleanly removable and that would basically be her android saga look. Um, I think a two-in-one wouldn't be a bad way to go for characters like Chi Chi and Bulma who have a lot of like costume changes. Some food and kitchen accessories wouldn't be a bad idea either especially if they can tie it in with the dining set. Bucket list number 10 is Dragon Ball Z era Chi Chi. Number 10 on my wish list is Bulma from Dragon Ball Z, and specifically uh, Earth civilian Bulma, because I know we have the journey to Namek, and while I really like that figure, it is very specifically her Namek outfit, and so it would be great to have just uh, civilian on Earth, Bulma, to go along with maybe some other displays outside of the Namek saga. And kind of like I said for Chi-Chi, I think it would be awesome if they can do some sort of two-in-one where um, a single figure comes with maybe a couple of wardrobe options. There are just a ton of outfits for Bulma in the series. Ideally, it would be somewhere, uh, one of her looks from the Android arc, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of a good midpoint 
I think that the kind of like shoulder length haircut is pretty much what I think of for Dragon Ball Z era Bulma. Uh, it's when she gets to be the most active in the story and quite a lot more involvement as far as like flying people around in her plane, reverse engineering the androids, detonators, reprogramming 16, finding uh, Cell's time machine and Cell's uh, eggs. And I think it would be really awesome if she came with baby trunks with the little cat ears, maybe a, uh, an alternate head where he's crying. It'd be a fun idea. I think it would uh, give the character a little bit broader appeal for people who are just like trunks completionists. Um, it also kind of sets up for uh, other characters down the road like Yajirobe. If they do pick one of her Android Saga looks, it seems more likely they would do the like start of the Android Invasion look with the orange vest and the white capri pants. Um, that one could include Baby Trunks, and I don't think it would be a bad pick, but if Tamashi came to me and was like, hey Art, uh, what is the next Bulma figure we should make? The Cell Saga, when she's on the lookout, uh, handing out the Saiyan armor to all the Saiyan characters. It's simple, clean, elegant looking, um, still comes with baby trunks, still has that classic shoulder length uh, haircut. Not having a Dragon Ball Z civilian on Earth, Bulma, uh, is definitely a gap in the line. The reason it's on the wish list and not the bucket list, though, is we do have the journey to Namek Bulma, which uh, kind of covers the gap if you squint and maybe get some like soft goods jacket to put on her or um, maybe you can kit bash her head onto different like Figma bodies. Um, oh, not to mention some Hoi Poi capsules. Like I think there's only one of them in line with the Adventure Begins Bulma and it's kind of her thing. I think she's a pretty important part of the series and uh, definitely lacking uh, in my Dragon Ball Z displays. Uh, somebody's got to cheer these two grumps. Number 10 on my wish list is Bulma from Dragon Ball Z, specifically a civilian outfit from Earth with uh, hopefully some Android or Cell Saga outfits and accessories. Bucket list number nine is King Kai because who else is going to make Goku ball over laughing like this? I debated uh, whether or not I wanted to dip into like the deity characters for the bucket list because uh, it could very quickly kind of grow into a team building thing that takes over the whole list. So I decided to limit it to just one character that I thought was um, most essential. I picked King Kai. Um, it was kind of a tight race between him, Kami, and Supreme Kai. Uh, Supreme Kai was probably the first eliminated, even though they're pretty close already with the Zamasu body, um, and he's a bit more like action ready. He's really only around for the Boo Saga, and uh, if they make him, they kind of need to make Kibito as well. Those two kind of come as a pair. Uh, I kind of ruled him out. And then Kami, uh, while he does get to see some action, especially in Dead Zone, which is like one of my favorite scenes for some reason, I just like Kami shooting lasers out of his eyes uh, and getting to fly around and do a little combat with Garlic Jr. I went with King Kai because, I mean, he's present from the point Goku meets him. He's also comedic, whereas Kami and Supreme Kai are like super serious and things that he needs to come with, uh, a really goofy, big laughing face like this, or even bigger. Serious, concerned looking, crunched, scrunched eyebrow face. More food accessories, never a bad idea. Articulated bubbles would probably be the like stretch goal, or a semi-articulated figurine that can do kind of a sitting pose and a running pose. Uh, that would be all right. Gregory and a hammer, and I guess they would need maybe hands for Goku to hold the hammer would be another option. Uh, those red training weights that he gives Goku in the Otherworld Tournament training arc. 
he's not going to be very articulated and he doesn't really need to be he just needs to do comedic things with his hands and put them behind his back and that's pretty much it so if they can save a little on his articulation and put it a little towards the accessories i think that would really be the way to do him as a character bucket list number nine is king kai at number nine on my wish list it's salsa from cooler's revenge now what we have here is not figure arts but third party history one of the strangest uh releases from demoniacal fits early days is uh this armored squadron captain figure he was largely a uh, reuse of their uh vice captain jace figure demoniacal fit i think originally set out to build out frieza's army starting with uh captain ginyu who's uh Parts got reused to make the Frieza soldier with the mutton chops. Jace, whose parts were reused for the Space Frenchman here. As for why I would still like uh, SHF to make a Salsa figure, one, uh, this is, like I said, one of Demoniacal Fit's earliest figures. Definitely a little rough around the edges. There's some paint rubbing off here that I'm not so happy about, and on the neck. Um, the sculpt is a little bit disjointed looking and the proportions are a little off along with being a very early demoniacal fit he is also possibly the single rarest figure that i own he is out of print and almost completely uh absent from the aftermarket uh so using that search term notification feature on ebay i was able to pick him up a refreshed updated release from figure arts would be awesome the final reason why I like figure arts to make this figure is I just love this character design. The color palette is beautiful. And speaking of figure arts wish lists, it really reminds me of that Daft Punk anime, the Interstellar 5555, whatever it's called. Uh, they've made Daft Punk figures in figure arts, so uh, I'm not going to rule it out. I'm just saying I think some of the characters from that would make pretty cool uh, figure arts action figures as well. If you aren't familiar with this character, go watch Cooler's Revenge, and you will see that he is one of the movie henchmen who gets to have one of those um, like technique spotlight duels with Piccolo. It's a pretty short fight, but uh, one of my favorites in the Dragon Ball movies Um we get to see Piccolo use his stretchy arms. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the origin of the Keyblade attack. And with the release of Metal Cooler, I think people are anticipating a fourth form cooler at some point, and Salsa to go along with him would be a really nice tie-in. Uh, depending on how a Salsa figure does, that also could open the door for uh, other B villains from the movies, which uh, would be pretty cool. I think uh, whatever Garlic Jr.'s henchmen are called, they all named after spices, maybe. I remember Lord Slug had some interesting henchmen. Zangia from Bojack. That is why my wish list number nine is Salsa from Cooler's Revenge. Number eight on the bucket list is Majin Buu Gohan Absorbed, aka Buhan. No secret among figure arts collectors that, as far as DBZ goes, the Boo Saga could use a little bit of love from Tamashi, and given how uh, incredible the Super Boo figure turned out, I think a lot of people are anticipating what figure arts will do with the remaining forms of Boo. The combination of like Piccolo's intelligence, Gohan's fighting strength, and the just pure like wacky spicy flavor of gotenks and majin buu combined makes for uh one of the series most interesting villains going up against uh vegito in probably the weirdest fight in dragon ball z if not all of dragon ball you have buu jumping into vegito's body through his mouth getting sliced up into pieces and turning into a bunch of heads, building a ghost army that fires a bunch of Kamehamehas, and 
And to cap it all off, Vegito getting turned into a piece of candy, but still continuing to kick Majin Buu's butt as a piece of candy. And so uh, this fight was always very memorable to me. It is why I not only uh, really would like figure arts to make this form of Majin Buu, but it has also cemented Vegito as the superior uh, Goku-Vegeta fusion. Yes, Gogeta is awesome and definitely gets some shine in the new Broly movie in Fusion Reborn. If you've heard me talk about my favorite DBZ movies is in my top three, but uh, for me, nothing tops the all-out cartoon fest that is uh, Buhan versus Vegito. As for accessories, I'd want them to include with Buhan, aside from kind of your standard range of facial expressions and hands, I'd really love if they captured some of the weird moments I talked about. At the very least, the Vegito candy. I'd also like for them to lean in a little bit more to what makes Majin Buu unique, which is just how like squishy and stretchy he is, with maybe a really stretched out impact face, neck combination, or arm, or maybe some body parts with like big craters or dimples punched into them, maybe some loose goo that can be thrown on uh, other characters. They probably ought to go ahead and update uh, Ultimate Gohan and Vegito while they're at it. Um, you won't see too many update requests on the bucket list just because I prioritize character completion over like having the most up-to-date version of every character. Also, I think that the 1.0 Vegito is one of the best 1.0 figures. If Buhan turns out any bit as good as Super Boo here, I will be very pleased. Um, wacky effect parts, Buhan uh, ghost attack, Vegito candy, stretchy or squished body parts, uh, maybe alternate head tentacle parts, goo to throw on uh, unsuspecting victims being absorbed. It would all be very cool. And yeah, so I think this one's pretty inevitable at, uh, at some point. So I look forward to uh, what Tomashi will do with my number eight for the bucket list, Buhan, or Majin Buu Gohan Absorbed. At number eight on my wish list, it is Super Android number 17, or just Super 17 for short. I would very much like for Tamashi to step on the accelerator for Dragon Ball GT and start releasing more than one GT figure per year. Super 17 was always one of my favorite designs from GT, and I think he has a lot of great potential for a really cool figure arts figure. Between his sort of greatest hits android abilities with the rocket arms and the absorption pads, and sort of like energy wave techniques, kind of similar to like Turles. Um, I think Figure Arts has the capability to make a figure that is so good that it kind of elevates the character. This is the Super Battle Collection figure from Bandai in 1998. The appeal of these figures for me was really always in the box art more than the actual figure, although this one's pretty interesting because he has uh, elbow articulation. The graphics with the color palette and the really nice character art was always really appealing to me. Super 17 is volume 40, and there's something very satisfying about seeing the entire Super Battle Collection uh, laid out on the back here for uh, cross-selling goodness. I'm going to put this out there. I really want SHF to make updated versions of every single Super Battle Collection release. And if they make Super 17, it kind of opens the door for GT version of 18 and Vegeta with the like leather vest. My wish list number eight is Super 17 from Dragon Ball GT. Bucket list number seven is an updated perfect cell. This is the only update to an existing 
figure arts figure that made it to the list. The 1.0 Perfect Cell originally came out, I think, in 2012, so it's over 10 years old at this point. While it may have been a good figure at the time, the sculpt just was never on model. I know a lot of people point out that he's too short. What really bothers me is if the like body proportions don't match the character design. His torso and legs are just way too skinny. Aside from that, the colors weren't really on the mark either. The green was a little washed out, the purple was a little bit muddy, and unfortunately, the premium color reissue that they did didn't really make it better. They kind of went too far the other way, oversaturated both green and purple, and then of course there was the manga color exclusive edition, but that one, um, I mean, it's the same off-model sculpt with manga colors, so if you're looking for anime cell, that's not going to be it. So although there is an existing Figu Arts Perfect Cell in three different color variants, most people prefer the Dragon Stars Perfect Cell as currently like the most on model 1 12th scale Perfect Cell. Not to mention all three of those color variants go for over $100, $120, $150 on the aftermarket these days. As far as what that update might look like, uh, I think that the 3.0 build is going to lend itself really nicely to giving him some bulkier proportions. Not overdoing it, but, you know, enough that it looks looks correct, looks on model. Wish list of things that I want them to include. I mean, Perfect Cell is a hard one because he, like, repeatedly uses other characters' attacks. Personally, would rather affect parts were sold separately, like, put the budget towards making his wings articulated. I was really disappointed with Imperfect Cell's wing and tail articulation. That's one thing that the original 1.0 Perfect Cell got right. The wing articulation is actually really good on that figure, and I hope they just do the same thing again, if not improve upon it. Perfect Cell probably needs to be a general retail release, not a premium Bandai. And one of the problems with all of the forms of Cell, actually, is his hip armor kind of prevents the legs from kicking out to the side, so I would rather they like, put any budget towards good wing articulation, solve for the hip armor problem, get the colors right, and just have very, very high expectations for an updated perfect cell. So really want them to nail it. I'm confident that they can. I think with the way things are trending as far as what they've been releasing lately, I don't think we'll have to wait too much longer for Perfect Cell. All signs kind of converge to that between the like updated uh, event-exclusive version of this Gohan, the 3.0 coming out this year that has the cape, um, Premium Bandai getting some of the androids out there, Imperfect Cell getting a release recently, and another spoiler for the rest of the list, Semi-perfect cell isn't going to make it. Definitely a fair conclusion. If he makes your list, let me know. But um, like I said, I definitely think perfect cell is the most essential form of cell. So that is my bucket list number seven updated perfect cell. Sticking with the cell saga and our battle damaged Gohan figure here, number seven on my wish list is Cell Jr. as a single standalone release because I want him to be fully articulated, fully accessorized, and accessibly priced so that he can be uh, army built whether you want to get three, five, or seven. I think those are probably good numbers people will shoot for. Um, there are seven in the series. Seven is a prime number. So unless they make it a single pack or a seven pack, there will be no buying exactly the right number of Cell Juniors. So that's why I sort of prefer it as a single pack. Seven pack is interesting, but I think it'll price some people out. I think there's a lot of potential for fun facial expressions and attack accessories. Honestly, I'm more interested in like mirror move accessories for Cell Junior than I am for Perfect Cell. I mean, Perfect Cell needs Kamehameha hands, and that's about it as far as special attacks. Um, but Cell Jr., they can go nuts with Solar Flare, Kianzan, or Destructo Disc, Special Beam Cannon, whatever. But don't make people buy more 
than is necessary. Um, design the product in a way that allows people to buy seven in a way that makes sense uh, and isn't annoying because collecting should be fun. I've always really liked the Cell Jr. sequence in the Cell Saga. It's one of my favorite parts. It's like where you get to see Super Saiyan 2 Gohan just really go on a rampage. I kind of think it's better than his fight with Cell afterwards. And um, it's brutal. I mean, in the anime, it's pretty brutal. Uh, in the manga, it is just gruesome. It's also the only time in the Cell Saga where the other Z fighters get to do much of anything. So uh, and just given how much hand-to-hand -hand combat and special ability combat Cell Jr. gets in with each of them and then with Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, um, I really want Cell Jr. to be a fully articulated, full-fledged release. And I really hope they release him in a way that makes mathematical sense. Number seven on my wish list is Cell Jr. More Gohan, younger this time. At number six on my bucket list, it's Garlic Jr. Despite not appearing in the manga, Garlic Jr. still has a saga and a movie to his name, and I think that warrants his inclusion on the bucket list. My top three DBZ movies are Fusion Reborn, Dead Zone, and The Return of Cooler. Dead Zone, I've always really enjoyed. It's not without its problems and weird moments, but uh, there's some really great fight sequences in it. It's from a time in Dragon Ball when the hero characters weren't super OP, so the stakes feel a little bit more real. And then the Garlic Jr. Saga, I've always had a soft spot for. It, it is the first Dragon Ball anything that I ever saw when I was younger, and even still going back and watching it, I think it holds up really well. It's a really tight, self-contained anime plot that uh, too many people overlook just because it doesn't have Super Saiyans in it. Both the movie and the Garlic Jr. Saga have some of my favorite sets and set pieces in all of Dragon Ball. The uh, castle in the Dead Zone is such a unique design. Um, it has kind of this like fantasy horror vibe. Garlic Jr. Saga in the anime is probably when we get to see the most of Kami's lookout. The action scenes flying around the exterior are fantastic, but I really love getting to see more of the interior. Between kind of the indoor like throne room fights with Gohan, Piccolo, um, and the weird mystical uh, journey with Kami and Popo going through sort of like the underworld of the lookout. Really beautiful, and I've always enjoyed it. We get to see Gohan's rage boost actually do something. Piccolo has a really great arc throughout this, and I'm pretty sure Gohan gets the W at the end. And prior to the Cell Saga, the plot's a little goofy, and if you can get over that, I think there's a lot still, there's a lot to enjoy. All of Dragon Ball is pretty goofy, so let's be honest about that. As far as Garlic Jr., um, his base form isn't probably the most exciting as a highly articulated action figure. Um, kind of along the same lines as King Kai, I think it's really going to come down to the facial expressions and accessories. Please, cloth wire cape, maniacal looking and angry looking expressions. With Kami and Popo trapped in glass bottles might be the only way that we get Kami and Popo in the line, so those would be awesome accessories. Aside from that, there's not too much for base form Garlic Jr. I suppose they could include some of the Blackwater Mist accessories, maybe alternate heads or faces for characters who get taken over by it. But um, what I really think they ought to do is make it just a bundle with his full power form uh, because that, on the other hand, will make for a fantastic action figure. Tamashi always kills it with the huge, bulky, buff characters. They do kind of a, a single, standalone, base form Garlic Jr., and then a big, bulky, full power Garlic Jr. as a separate release. That would be alright, too. I think Tamashi would do a fantastic job, whether it's the like character accessory-driven base form or the action, articulation, and huge muscly sculpt 
full power form. Uh, and so that is why my number six bucket list pick is Garlic Jr. Uh-oh, Gohan's in trouble. Who's gonna save him? Goku? Piccolo? Trunks? Nope. Number six on my wish list, it's none other than Icarus. Your own personal Hyad Dragon always coming in clutch and saving your boy Gohan from Blackwater Mist, Cooler's Armored Squadron, and himself. Icarus and Gohan are the single most wholesome thing about Dragon Ball Z. I think Dragon Ball Super would win a lot of fans over if Icarus were to return, maybe as a fully grown dragon. I know they haven't made anything like this in the line to date, but this is a brand that has made Charizard and a company that also makes SH Monster Arts, so I feel like they're a few uh, offices away from being able to pull it off really, really well. As far as things Icarus needs, pretty much just good articulation and maybe a serious looking face, a happy looking face, maybe an eating face and, uh, and or a sleeping face. The other piece that would be pretty cool if they included is an articulated uh, kid, little kid Gohan with the red hat get up. I know they kind of released a figurine with the exclusive Raditz from 2023, but I really want just a more full-fledged young Gohan figure that has some alternate faces, has the hat, the hat is critical, the tail, um, and as much articulation as they can pack into such a small character, if they included that with Icarus, that would be awesome. Um, they could also maybe include some of the like dance accessories from the whistling uh, performance in, uh, is it Lord Slug? I think it's in Lord Slug. Dial up whoever made the SH Figure Arts Charizard or someone at the Monster Arts Department, and let's get Icarus into SH Figure Arts, my wish list number six. All right, stepping into the top five, it's about to get real GT heavy up in here. As I mentioned, with Super 17, I want Figure Arts versions of every Super Battle Collection figure, which means there's quite a lot of ground to cover with respect to Dragon Ball GT. Number five on my bucket list is Super Baby 2 who I am fairly confident will be coming out sometime in the next couple of years, and that's based on a couple of things. First of all, Dragon Star's Super Baby 2 is releasing pretty soon here, and that, if you don't know, is Bandai's domestic figure line, which at least means that the character is on their radar. The second reason, I don't know if Tamashi have outright confirmed this, but I've heard that part of the roadmap for Figure Arts Dragon Ball includes uh, making a figure for every character in the Dragon Ball Fighters game, which is a very, very popular 2D fighter. Super Baby 2 kind of uh, had a huge boom in popularity thanks to being added to that game. As far as the bucket list is concerned, I'm really, really looking for um, characters that pair well with existing releases that don't necessarily have um, things to pair with currently first character that I think of with respect to Super Saiyan 4 Goku is Baby because that is the first appearance of Super Saiyan 4 during that fight. And then the final reason that I, I'm pretty confident he'll be coming is the aftermarket price for retro figures. Like the Super Battle Collection right now costs more than the figure arts probably will. I think it's a pretty safe bet. I don't have too many... Um, special requests for Super Baby 2. Um, I do think it would be cool if they made GT Bulma at some point because she also plays a pretty big role in both the Baby arc and the Shadow Dragons arc. I think some sort of Revenge Death Ball accessory would be very cool, although um, in some of the scenes and in the Fighters game, that effect can get, like, Spirit Bomb sized. <laughs> so... Um, maybe a scaled down version of that, but I really like the black and pink color scheme for that effect. Super Baby 2 is a pretty strong necessity based on the Dragon Stars release, the Fighters roster, the 
playability with Super Saiyan 4 Goku and um, just how much demand there is on the aftermarket for even like the super old retro baby figures. And number five bucket list figure is Super Baby 2. Next time on Dragon Ball GT, my number five wish list pick is Nova Shenron. No shortage of GT figures on my lists, and between the Black Star and Shadow Dragon Balls, they have at least two full sets that they could distribute among figure releases. Four, if they do glowing versions like they've done for the previous Namekian and Earth sets. So uh, that would bring a total of 28 GT figures, and I say bring it on, with the exception of they can pretty much skip over the entire Black Star Dragon Ball saga, um, unless they count GT Pan and Trunks in that category, which I guess they could. Um, and those two are not on my list because they're kind of soft announced at this point. Like we've seen not only prototypes, but promo picks for them. So hopefully they'll get officially announced and pre-orderable in the next couple months. Um, but yeah, with the exception of maybe Legic, they can skip over all of the Black Star Dragon Ball saga. Uh, after that, GT is kind of where it hits its stride, for me at least. Pretty much any characters after that would be fair game for my collecting priorities. Nova Shenron is definitely a standout, and if they make Nova Shenron, it's inevitable they're going to make Ice Shenron. They're exactly the same mold. Accessories, I don't have too many specific requests other than make the wings articulated and foldable, uh, whether they do that through articulation or swappable parts. But my biggest request for Nova and Ice Shenron is that they don't give them the metal cooler treatment. Um, buying two of them is going to be especially annoying if they're $120 or more by the time they get around to them. So just give them the regular metallic paint. I would love uh, just kind of the Golden Frieza style release. They could even do an exclusive like red version of Nova Shenron. I don't necessarily want the Shadow Dragon Ball set tied to the Shadow Dragons themselves because I don't know how many of them would make great figures. Nova and Ice Shenron are definitely up there and so that's why they made the list. Um, the one that was pretty close, maybe in the teens somewhere of my wish list, is Oceanus Shenron. I think she's, a, she's got a very cool design. Always nice to get some more lady figures in the Dragon Ball line. So she'll probably make my list someday down the road. Uh, once they get a little deeper into GT. Nova and Ice Shenron are some of the coolest designs. They get some of the best fights with Super Saiyan 4 Goku. I just think they'll make killer figures, especially if they don't get cooler treatment. I really hope they don't. I think they probably are going to, just given the way that they are shaded, but we'll see. I don't know if these are as safe a bet at this point. Maybe after they do some of the heavy hitter villains. Uh, hopefully this year we'll bring some more GT announcements. Aside from GT Pan and Trunks, really hoping to get some GT villains in the line. We know we're in for a long haul if the next GT announcement is like Lord Ludd or the Para Para Brothers. <laughs> Please no, just skip over them. I'll be skipping over them if they don't, so uh, I'm really hoping they announce some villains from GT sometime this year, and that'll give us an idea of like what direction they're taking. Yeah, number five, Nova and Ice Shenron. Fusion number four on my bucket list is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Another one that I think is kind of inevitable, um, given that they have released both Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta. Pretty much take the Goku body and put a soft plastic um, overlay vest on him, a slightly different hair sculpt, and uh, call it a day. I love Super Saiyan 4's design. It is my favorite Super Saiyan form. Super Saiyan 4 Goku was my first and remains my favorite SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball figure. And yeah, I just really want them to round out the Super Saiyan 4 club with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I think that makes him pretty essential to the line. Um, he's also very popular in Dragon Ball Fighters. I've seen some people say that Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta should come with the fusion hands for Goku and Vegeta, but I kind of don't think he really needs the DLC. 
and would rather see them sprinkle it in with um, characters like Nova Shenron and GT Bulma. I really want to see them lean into just what a goofball he is and include things like a confetti Kamehameha and a really big goofy laughing face, but also think like a Big Bang Kamehameha would be uh, a nice accessory to include as well. So Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is a matter of when, not if, and is my number four bucket list pick. Number four on my wish list is Janemba from Fusion Reborn. My wish list originally also had Dabura, but I decided one evil sword wielding demon lord is probably enough to get the idea across. And between the two, I have a lot of fondness for Janemba. Um, he's got the fighter's roster presence going for him, and his fight with Super Saiyan 3 Goku is one of my favorite animation sequences in all of Dragon Ball. Super Saiyan 3 has just never looked better. The quality of the art and effects is fabulous. The setting is this bizarre jelly bean hell, and if you haven't seen it and you're a Super Saiyan 3 Goku fan, definitely go check it out. And even if you're not a Super Saiyan 3 fan, um, go check it out and see if it changes your mind just because of how cool the fight with Janemba is. As for the character himself, his body type is actually not too different from Cell, especially Perfect Cell or Semi-Perfect Cell, with the really pronounced armor, hip armor, and torso armor, and the tail coming out of the middle of his back. He definitely must come with his sword, and possibly the little thing that turns into the sword. This is probably a stretch, but I think it would be incredible if they found a way to give him like a partially pixelated teleporting head for when he does that teleportation effect. I don't know, maybe some kind of like portal with an arm sticking out of it, firing a key blast, since that's a prominent part of his kit in Fighters. I think if they crack the code for articulation on Perfect Cell, very similar body type on Janemba. But yeah, cool movie villain, great well animated fight scene with Goku with lots of very unique effects to draw from for accessories. And he's part of the fighters roster, which uh, rumor has it they are out to complete. So I think it's pretty likely that they'll make him at some point, especially since they've done the figure arts zero statue. So my number four wish list pick is Janemba. Along the same lines as the Garlic Jr. saga, another part of Z that I hope figure arts doesn't brush over is the Great Saiyaman saga. As far as places to take Gohan's character after the big climactic battle in the Cell arc, I don't think anybody saw becoming a Power Ranger on the menu. For me, this arc has always had a certain charm to it. Along with the other world tournament, it was really a breath of fresh air and injected some lightness and comedy that had kind of been sucked out by the end of the Cell saga. Not that I didn't love the intensity of that arc, um, but Dragon Ball has always had kind of a balance of those two parts. For some, it may have gotten a little too goofy, but um, I always really enjoyed Gohan's antics and the rom-com aspects of it, and it introduces one of my favorite characters, uh, Videl, who is my number three bucket list pick in either one of or both of her looks from this arc going into the World Tournament Saga. Ideally both hairstyles with maybe some swappable parts for her torso. I do think it's more likely they would make the um, pink and white tank top with the short haircut since that is her look through the tournament arc where she gets a bit more involved in like the big story of the Boo Saga. It's also the default look for her character model in Fighters. Yes, another character from the Fighters roster. So being part of the Fighters roster, combined with the fact that her character has more than stuck around through the series since her introduction, 
um, I think makes it very essential to get uh, some form of representation of Videl in the figure arts line. They could throw us a total curveball and make her um, say a girl or say a man mark two outfit, which I would not say no to. It doesn't appear at all in the anime if I remember, and I think it's only in Wrath of the Dragon. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but if I were in charge of planning all releases for Videl, I think it would be a two-in-one Say a Man World Tournament release, the Say a Girl or Say a Man Mark II, and then probably her look from Super. If they really want to go nuts, uh, GT. I <laughs> love her character's introduction in the Great Say a Man arc. I love the training scenes with Gohan uh, and Goten. I thought those were really sweet and uh, endearing moments for all the characters involved there. Even Chi Chi has some uh, lighter moments, which is nice for a change of pace in Z. I think it's more likely they do the short hair, but if they can make it a two in one with the pigtails look, that she first appears in. That has always been my favorite, and I think that would make a really cool release if they can do something with maybe some swappable arms and torso parts, or even just include the pigtails hairstyle on its own. Um, I know she never wears the pink and white tank top with that hairstyle in the series, but she does appear that way in the bumper before they cut to commercials in the anime. I think maybe her boots change colors too, so maybe that's too much to ask for both outfits in one release. Facial expressions, I mean Videl has some great ones, especially in this part of the series when uh, she's trying to blackmail Gohan and having her back and forth with Chi Chi, this like shocked looking face. I really like Videl as a character. She was a great introduction to the series also brought some humanity to a character that I thought was completely unlikable in the Cell Saga, Mr. Satan, aka Hercule, and that is why Videl is number three on my bucket list. Number three on the wish list is 18 from either the Cell Saga, the Boo Saga, or some combination thereof, and the reason I say combination is Similar to Chi-Chi and Bulma, I'm not sure how many Android 18 figures they're going to be able to make, and so I think it would be really cool for them to cover at least two of her outfits with a single figure release. And there are two ways that I could imagine them doing that. The first, if you remember her Cell Saga outfit, it's the blue jeans, white t-shirt, and black vest. Her Boo Saga outfit is blue jeans, um striped long sleeve t-shirt and black tank top and you'll notice she's wearing blue jeans in both i don't remember if her boots change a figure that has a swappable upper body would be uh, a really smart way to go and that would cover both of those looks the alternate idea is her upper body in the boo saga is exactly the same as her first appearance look in the android saga minus the denim vest and if they're going to remake that version of 18, the denim vest really needs to be removable this time. It's probably her most iconic appearance in the series, uh, kicking Vegeta's butt and breaking his arm. And the fact that the existing figure doesn't cover that is very disappointing, so I would uh, really expect if they remake the first appearance 18, the vest is removable. And if they're going to do that, then she would just be a leg swap away from the Boo Saga look. So uh, swap out the black leggings and denim skirt for blue jeans, and you cover both of those looks. I'm really, really torn between Cell Saga and Boo Saga, which one I prefer. I'm leaning towards Boo Saga just because I think it's a little bit more versatile. The Cell Saga outfit is very specific to hiding around with 16 on the island, talking to squirrels, uh, not getting blown up by Krillin and getting absorbed by Cell, and that's pretty much the last we see of that outfit until the end of that saga. For the rest of Z, at least, um, her Boo Saga outfit could pretty much cover that. I mean, she's got like her 
Kame House uh, Beach Island appearance in the round everybody up for the tournament. But during the tournament, also in Bio Broly, um, it's all about the black tank top striped long sleeve shirt. That, I think, kind of covers more of a general civilian 18 Dragon Ball Z look. I think between the two, that would probably be my first choice. Um, it also would uh, give us something to do with this guy. 18 and Mr. Satan are very underrated comedic duo in uh, the World Tournament arc and Bio Broly, for that matter. I'm on the fence about whether first appearance 18, 17 and 18 need updated. Um, if nothing else, they need reissued because they're just so darn expensive. But um, if they're going to update them, I really hope that they make 18 versatile enough to also cover the Boo Saga appearance since it's so similar. And if they're going to do that for 18, for 17, uh, I think they really ought to, like, I don't know, give him his ranger jacket or maybe a battle damaged torso just to give him two appearances in one. So far, they haven't made uh, 18 as a standalone release without a corresponding 17. I think they're going to have to get away from that, though, just because she does play a much bigger role in the Cell Saga, the Boo Saga, where 17 just isn't around. And I would just, it would just be a shame for them to skip over all of those looks because uh, they don't think they can make Android 18 on her own. Uh, personally, I mean, things I would love to collect for Android 18 are um, a redone first appearance Cell Saga, Boo Saga, her civilian looks from earlier in Dragon Ball Super would be cool. GT Android 18 once they get if they get around to the Super 17 arc um, and as far as accessories for Android 18 I mean the the windswept hair is always one of my favorite accessories that comes with the Android figures so I hope they keep doing that the range of facial expressions is much better on the Tournament of Power release, and honestly, the Tournament of Power 17 and 18 are such underrated figures. Of course, needs like lots of side eye, lots of hair flip attitude, and things like that. And you've pretty much got it covered. Crossed arms, if she can't cross her arms with the articulation itself, is always a nice touch. And then, yeah, just like the swappable outfits, characters that they're not going to make a ton of figures of, but have a lot of different appearances in specific parts of the series. So that is my pick for number three on my wish list. 18 from Dragon Ball Z latter half of the series. Number two on my bucket list is Omega Shenron, the final boss from Dragon Ball GT. Along the same lines as Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta, all signs point to a matter of when, not if. Why make Super Saiyan 4, Goku, and Vegeta two of the best figures in the line if they're not going to make the villain counterpart for them to do battle with? And given Tamashi's track record with the big buff spiky monster characters like Fifth Form Cooler, I am very excited to see what they'll do with Omega Shenron's design, and I hope they take design cues from Fifth Form Cooler, just given how well built a figure that is. Um, and in my mind, at least, he's like roughly the scale I would expect for Omega Shenron. I've always liked Omega Shenron's character design, and more importantly, I have always loved the finale of GT. I love Vegeta and Bulma repurposing the Bloodswave machine to push Vegeta to Super Saiyan 4. Love the idea of the Dragon Balls accumulating this negative energy over years and years of being abused for the plot of Dragon Ball, and each of the Shadow Dragons um, being born as a result of particular wishes that have been made. Sin Shenron's strength... Uh, corresponding to the wish that brought back everyone killed by Frieza in the Namek Saga, uh, which included Guru and therefore Purunga, 
and the power required to resurrect Purunga kind of leading to this ultimate negative power, Sin Shenron, who then, of course, uh, absorbs all the Shadow Dragon Balls and becomes Omega Shenron. As far as features for a figure, that is one that I hope uh, they manage to include in a single release, just with swappable uh, front torso pieces, uh, one with and one without the Dragon Balls. And if they really want to go the extra mile, one with six Dragon Balls, um, Omega Shenron seems defeated, returns as Sin Shenron, tries to absorb all seven Dragon Balls again, but Goku grabs the four-star ball and eats it to prevent him from absorbing that one because of its personal significance to him. In, I guess, kind of his final form, Omega Shenron only has six of the seven balls absorbed. Yeah, it would be really cool if they can cover all three of those forms in one release. Uh, I guess that would also include an alternate uh, forehead piece with and without the Dragon Ball for the Sin Shenron appearance. Other things, like maybe some a little bit of like ball joint articulation on the spike so that you could cradle different sized characters in his back spikes to perform his whatever his electricity move is called. I don't really want them to try to include effect parts. I would rather they focus on the size, getting the scale and design right along the lines of fifth form cooler and covering the different forms with the alternate torso pieces and forehead piece. I know Dragon Stars has recently released a version of Omega Shenron, um, and I hope Bandai isn't setting us up for another Kid Buu situation where we wait for years and years and years before they get around to a figure arts of a series final boss. And given that they've made these Super Saiyan 4 figures so well, they need a villain to face, and that villain is my number two bucket list pick, Omega Shenron. Number two on my wish list is Pycon. As I talked about with Videl and the Great Saiyaman arc, I love the little reprieve that the characters get during that arc and the Otherworld Tournament. I saw a comment recently describing Otherworld Tournament arc as cozy. World ending stakes removed. Um, the focus being placed on Goku and his desire to train and get stronger, and all of it taking place in this kind of goofy dream world full of aliens with strange abilities from across time and space. Just good, lighthearted Dragon Ball tournament arc, and I gotta tell you, I love some tournament arcs in Dragon Ball. For me, the fights in Dragon Ball and Z are always at their best when they're more of a technique showcase and less of a shouting match. Having a tournament arc which always put that sort of technique based fighting front and center was really a nice palate cleanser entering into the Boo Saga. And the climactic match between Goku and Pycon has lots of great buildup. Pycon as a character has, I mean, obviously some design elements borrowed from an already beloved character Piccolo. He gets the future Trunks treatment as far as an introduction with like easily trouncing the big bads from last season, having to uh, knock Perfect Cell down a few pegs in hell, <laughs> as well as uh, Frieza and King Cold for good measure. He very quickly earns Goku's respect, and if you like Dragon Ball, you probably like Goku and the people he likes, so um, that does him some favors as well, but also he's just got a very cool look, a very unique fighting style. He's lean, his movements are very fluid, and he has like some elemental powers that are pretty uh, distinct, maybe an airbender or a firebender to Goku's water bending. Above all else, he's definitely a beloved character, and, and with one condition being met, I think he would make for a phenomenal figure arts action figure. 
that condition is he needs soft goods robes that are removable along with his hat. He has both looks during prominent parts of the tournament arc, uh, both with and without the robe and hat. Posable wired cloth robes, I think, are always the right move for things that need to flow and move like fabric. I don't really like soft goods for just like a shirt that kind of sits statically over the figure. I do, however, really, really like it for capes, jackets, cloaks, billowy things, um, like Picon's robes, especially when they need to be removable to achieve his blue shirt and pants look. As far as other accessories, um, maybe some of the goofy faces that Pycon makes when he's uh, insulting the barrier between Hell and the rest of Otherworld. Maybe something from the part where he's fighting with Janemba to buy time for Goku and Vegeta to fuse, and he gets like, I don't know, clapped in the face and makes that really bizarre reaction face. That could be a cool piece to include with Janemba, perhaps, or um, some other character related to Fusion Reborn. Um, maybe Gogeta would be appropriate if they make a Fusion Reborn Gogeta. Ideally, I really wish, I really, really hope that his hat is just transferable to any of his heads. I don't really know if they've, if Tamashi has done magnets before, but I think that's the best way to go. You don't get any holes, you don't have seams, you don't have um, hats that can only be worn on some expressions and not others. And Pycon is just a bald head with some spots, so uh, there's really nothing in the way of that sort of system working really well for his hat. I think making the entire robe out of cloth would look better than if they did like the upper body in plastic and the lower part in cloth. Uh, some kind of like fire or tornado effect for his hyper tornado or thunder flash attacks would be really cool. But yeah, I love the other world tournament arc. It's got that cozy, dreamy Goku uh, is kind of back to basics and uh, finds a new fighting bromance partner, no longer has the weight of the universe on his shoulders. The conclusion of this arc isn't uh, the most satisfying, but that's not really what it's about for me. Um, like, whatever Grand Kai's super secret training is, it's obviously kind of um, smoke and mirrors, <laughs> and so I'm not too disappointed by the end of it, and I, yeah, I just love this part of the series. I love Pycon's design. I think he'll make an awesome figure. My number two wish list pick, Pycon. Now, before we get to my number one picks, I am going to rattle off some honorable mentions in no particular order. These are figures that could have made my list on any other day, uh, may make my list in the future after some more figures come out, and if I do an updated version, or might be on your lists, um, so maybe... Uh, offering some suggestions if uh, you're thinking about uh, posting a list as a comment here. Let's see, we've got uh, Yajirobe and Korin, two-pack, Bandit Yamcha and Puar as well, uh, Kami, Popo, those kind of uh, deity and demigod characters, I think, uh, Supreme Kai and Kibito, came close to making the bucket list, so maybe in a future version of that. Additionally, we've got like other forms of some of the major villains, especially ones they've made so far, like Semi-Perfect Cell, Cooler's fourth form, some other like B and C tier villains, especially from the Boo Saga. You've got like Pui Pui, Dabura, Dabura. As far as like movies go, top picks for me are probably like Bojack, and Zangia, um, and then of course you gotta, if you're gonna make those, you've gotta make Bojack Trunks and Bojack Gohan. Super Android 13 in particular, I've always thought was a really cool design. Um, they've gotta make Fusion Reborn Gogeta at some point. I hope they do it on a 3.0 mold, even though they've got the 2.0 Oob and or Majub from GT. Such a cool character, came very, very close to making my wish list. Um, there's just not really anything else to build around him yet, so uh, in a future one, I think, 
Say a Girl or Say a Man Mark II, already talked about. More movie characters, Tapion in particular, uh, would be very cool. All Z Brawlies, every single one. Base form, Super Saiyan mind controlled form, Super Saiyan not mind controlled form, uh, and even an updated legendary Super Saiyan Broly. Some more Saiyan characters, King Vegeta, uh, Fasha or Celepa, depending on uh, which source material you're reading, Bardock's teammate. Would really like them to release the Chilai and Lemo figures that they teased at some of the conventions. Future Gohan, I mean that one, of course, that would be an opportunity to perhaps get some new versions of Android 17 and 18 as well if they did a little uh, future timeline mini subline with future Gohan and future Trunks, maybe future Bulma and some time machine accessories would be cool. More kind of comedic civilian characters, the tournament announcer. Oh, Kid, Goten, and Trunks. Those are probably up high on some people's lists, I would bet. I thought about putting Goten on my list, on my bucket list, because I do think uh, he's really needed. He's definitely got a little bit more of an active role with his training arc with Bedell. I've always thought Kid Trunks was kind of annoying, so I kind of snubbed him from the bucket list, but I can understand if you want both of them. Um, I don't necessarily want them in a two-pack, though. I think they need to come with their Super Saiyan and base form heads. Oh, I could see them making an Ozaru Gohan or Goku. Monster Zarbon, pretty low on my bucket list, but I think they could get around to it. Oh, um, speaking of Namek figures, if they're going to backtrack to Namek, they've got to make the Frieza arc Vegeta. So that is my favorite Vegeta armor. Nail, of course, um, really ought to get a similar treatment to Pycon. Frieza soldier army builders would be pretty cool. Um, give them like some swappable limbs and alien heads and those little arm cannons. Martial arts tournament Chi Chi and Goku for sure. Um, barefoot Goku parts would be cool with that one. 3.0 versions of all the main characters. Um, I think that some other GT villains could make the list. Uh, Oceanus Shenron, Dr. Mew, General Rildo. I mean, I haven't even scratched the surface of Dragon Ball Super. Truth be told, I've only seen the movies. I've never seen the anime or read the manga, so I've got some catching up to do there. But if your list includes Dragon Ball Super, that'd be cool. Let me know what they're missing. I know um, they really haven't touched much of the manga-only material at this point. So like the Moro arc and the Ultra Egos and the breakfast cereals. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if they dive into Dragon Ball Heroes stuff. Um, give third party a run for their money on the uh, Xeno Goku and Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 Gohan, uh, Super Saiyan 4 Broly, I'll take all the Super Saiyan 4s, Super Saiyan 4 Vegito for sure, because I'm not really into any of the third party Super Saiyan 4 Vegito figures at this point. Um, rescale the Dragon Ball line, Kid Gohan with the hat, Kid Gohan with the sword and the orange uh, piccolo gi, redo Kid Gohan from the Saiyan Saga with the headband, Krillin with hair. All right, I think I've hit my limit for now. I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but uh, yeah, that's just a few places I think they could take the line in the future. Um, and now let's get to my number one picks. If you're a DBZ fan, this one probably won't come as much of a surprise. My number one bucket list pick is Kid Buu final boss of Dragon Ball Z and has yet to be made. They made Saiyan Saga Vegeta, fourth form Frieza, and quality of the figure notwithstanding, uh, perfect sell, all within like the first three years of the line's existence, and, and ten years later we are still waiting on the series final boss for Dragon Ball Z, the final form of Majin Buu, kind of similar to Buhan, Kid Buu, is just weird, and that might be part of the reason why they haven't gotten around to making him as a figure yet. I can definitely see there are some challenges to uh, creating a figure that represents his really, really weird skill set. I've heard some comments that 
They haven't made him because they're waiting until they perfect articulation for small characters. I've never really bought that argument just because fourth form Frieza has been in the line. There's really not that much difference other than the pants. Another reason why they might be waiting so long is they just don't want to complete that set of Dragon Ball Z final bosses for each season. The last thing is just figuring out how to represent him as a figure with his really weird moveset and making him more essential. He is part of the fighters roster and a very unique character in many different Dragon Ball games. I found this uh, sprite animation sequence from an older Dragon Ball fighter. I don't know which exactly this is from, but this pretty much summarizes like some of the moves that would be cool if they can represent. I think the most important ones for me are boot kick through the ground, so then the ability to detach his leg at the knee and uh, connect it to like a little ground piece. That was always one of my favorites. It would be really cool if he could curl up into a cannonball and zoom around like he does. Um, the stretchy limbs, uh, I'm a little iffy on. I've never really liked bendy wire parts on action figures. Kind of like just putting soft goods over a blank body. Bendy, bendy wire limbs and tails kind of come off to me as cheating a little bit with respect to... Um, making articulated plastic figures. They often are too stiff to the point where they don't move very well, too soft to the point where they aren't durable enough, and for whatever reason they tend to secrete like oily substances over time, which I just don't, don't like the feel of at all. I don't know, maybe they've gotten better at it since the figures that I've tried with bendy wire parts. I know Figuarts is working on the Gear 5 Luffy from their One Piece line, which will have some bendy wire limbs. If they gave him like extended limbs that were just solid plastic, that could work, but those would be pretty fragile, I think. I don't know, that's probably not the most important feature for me for a Kid Buu figure. Um, his like goofy wiggly torso they could do. And I know that the third party Kid Boo that's being made by Tonson is going to have that as an alternate torso piece. Other accessories that he really needs are a sleepy face, manic howling beating his chest face, at least one head with the tail pointing forward for his candy beam, an evil grin, Maybe uh, pulling one eyelid down and sticking his tongue out face. I think if uh, you're a Dragon Ball Z fan looking at the line like me, this is definitely the most glaring omission uh, gap that they have to date. Probably giving collectors something to wait for and uh, maybe trying to figure out what to do with the accessories because there are just so many weird attacks that Kid Buu does. Um, and so many goofy faces that he makes. The sort of like marathon tag team fight with Goku and Vegeta is just a great end to the series. It has some really funny parts, uh, kind of similar to Buhan. It's just really bizarre. Has lots of great character moments with Goku and Vegeta fighting together for I think the first and only time in the series itself. Um, it's a really good way to cap off Dragon Ball Z. Personally, Dragon Ball Z has always been about the relationship between Goku and Vegeta. If you follow the thread of the story, um, it introduces Vegeta as a foil to Goku very early on, and, uh, and he sticks around to continue acting as a foil until the two kind of converge in the series finale. So definitely a a very important part of the series that is missing from the figure arts line. And that is why my number one bucket list pick is Kid Boo. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, my number one wish list pick for Dragon Ball figure arts is 
every form of baby from Dragon Ball GT. Now before you say, no, 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 that's more than one figure. Okay, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be picky and make me narrow it down to just one figure, I would pick uh, the second form of Super Baby Vegeta. I don't even know what it's called, but it's... If you thought third form Frieza was a blink and you'll miss it transformation, this is the form where he has the gold vest with the fins, the blue eyes, but he still kind of looks like a Vegeta-shaped person. He throws exactly one punch before deciding that's enough of that form, on to the next one, and we get Super Baby 2. Dragon Ball GT really hits its stride for me during the Baby Saga. Some of the best written science fiction in Dragon Ball, it is the origin of Super Saiyan 4. Baby is such an interesting villain with such a goofy name. The idea of a parasitic alien that can uh, kind of level the power scaling by taking over the bodies of the existing Z fighters, and not to mention all of Earth. <laughs> if you thought uh, Super Boo did some damage to Earth, um, wait until you see the Baby Saga. Every form of baby also includes implicitly kind of every form of Vegeta from GT. I'm going to tag him on to this last pick as well. I just really like Vegeta's design in GT. I know it's kind of a relic of the 90s, but I love it for that reason. Mustache, no mustache. Baby Gohan versus Vegeta is maybe the best fight in GT. would love to know who worked on the animation for this sequence because it is like a level above. This arc is just full of like comedic, funny character moments and genuine horror. Vegeta, safe driver, taking Bulla on a shopping spree before uh, promptly yeeting her into the car and having her drive away. And then you have just like weird body horror with baby taking over Vegeta. Um, psychological horror with uh, baby kind of lying dormant in trunks only to kind of activate when he sees baby Vegeta. The designs for baby's forms are just awesome in my opinion. We get the return of one of the most wholesome parts of the series with the friendship between Boo and Mr. Satan. We get handsome Boo in disguise. We get uh, some payoff for the ending of Dragon Ball Z with the return of Oob fusing with Boo to become Maju. We get some backstory on the planet Vegeta from the species that inhabited it uh, and their level of scientific advancement or, where they were able to kind of store their, I don't know, collective civilization consciousness in this parasitic life form. Vegeta's past coming back to haunt, haunt him a little bit, which I think is probably deserved. <laughs> and finally, Baby is just a bastard. He uh, <laughs> takes not only um, takes over all of Earth, um, he immediately undoes all of the work Goku, Trunks, and Pan put into the previous arc to recover the Black Star Dragon Balls by using them again to recreate the planet Tuffle in Earth's orbit, which is really weird and probably not safe. Um, I think the first instance of a magical hand-holding ceremony to power up... Um, baby Vegeta to his super baby Vegeta form. Oh, <laughs> you have Pan uh, curing people of the baby parasite by flying overhead and throwing laxatives into their mouths. It has to be seen to be believed. As far as figures, we talked about Super Battle Collection and how I want figure arts to make versions of every Super Battle Collection figure. And as far as the Baby Saga goes, that covers quite a lot of ground. There was a two-pack of Baby life form and GT Vegeta in his base form. Then there was Super Baby Vegeta 1 and 2, uh, 2 and 1 pack. Then, of course, there's Super Baby 2 we already talked about. And then the holiest of holy grails for Super Battle Collection, the Golden Ozaru Baby, which... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I might not even want to buy if Figure Arts makes it, but I think uh, there's a... Given that they made Ozaru Vegeta, 
and other big characters like Purunga, I'm not going to rule it out, and I think they'd make a gorgeous uh, Golden Ozaru figure. Um, it'll probably be, uh, it'll probably have a gorgeous price as well, and take up a gorgeous amount of space, so <laughs> we'll see on that one, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they make all those other forms, they end up doing that one as well. And arguably, there's the uh, Gohan and Goten 2-pack that comes with their base and Super Saiyan forms um, with their looks from the Baby Saga, so uh, you could consider that Baby Gohan and Baby Goten. Beyond Super Battle Collection, I think they, I really would like them to make a GT Bulma, and if they're going to do that, they ought to give her some Baby Bulma expressions. Um, I mean, I'd take fresh out of the tank, baby, uh, or in the tank for that matter, maybe um, as an accessory with a Dr. Mew figure. During the production of this video, they announced the GT Trunks figure, which does not include his Super Saiyan head or a torso without the jacket, um, which is uh, maybe leaving an opening or an opportunity to release a second version of GT Trunks without the jacket, maybe with the Super Saiyan head, maybe with some Baby Trunks expressions. It could be a way to get a lot of different characters from GT and have some nice cross-selling capabilities with like evil faces for those characters. And so that's why I <laughs> selected a number one wishlist figure that opens those possibilities because I really like the Baby Saga I think it is completely slept on by Dragon Ball fans. I've always liked Baby Vegeta's design, and if I had to narrow it down to one figure to like encapsulate all of that, I'd probably pick the second form of Super Baby Vegeta. If they make that one, I think it's kind of a good indication of how deep they're going to go into that uh, arc. I think that's everything, so my last pick my number one wish list pick is kind of a cheat, but it's my list. It's every form of baby from Dragon Ball GT, and pretty much just everything to do with the baby saga. Um, but if I'm narrowing it down to one, it is the second form of baby Vegeta. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop your list down below. You can refer to my list or the honorable mentions where I just rattled off a bunch of characters that might have made the list. I think there's still a lot of ground to cover with the SH Figure Arts line. I would really like to see them adopt some way to get more alternate outfits into the line without making them full price figures. Um, I think that is maybe a topic for another video, but. I've thought about, like, do I... Yes, as funny as, like, Batman Vegeta and Postboy Piccolo and Hawaiian Shirt Goku would be, do I really want figure arts versions of them with, like, all the faces and hands that I already have with other figures? Is there some way that they can just release, like, alternate outfits? Maybe an inexpensive subline with fewer accessories that's compatible with the existing figures of those characters? And yeah, just let me know uh, what are your bucket list figures, what are your wish list figures, and any other, uh, not necessarily figures, but just uh, new things you'd like to see in the figure arts line. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.